All right, joining me tonight uh, on Reality Check, I have with me Omar Abdullah, leader of the National Conference and also former Chief Minister of Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, thank you, Omar Abdullah, for joining us. Uh, Omar Abdullah, I've been seeing uh, you've been tweeting your concerns about this uh, encounter. You've also been uh, sitting in protest today. Now, there are some indications we're hearing that the police might release the bodies, give the bodies back to the families. They've also spoken of an inquiry. Do you think that that addresses uh, some of the concerns you and others have been raising or not really? Well, obviously, uh, the immediate concern, uh, which was the return of the bodies to the families, that, that uh, from what we hear, is uh, partially uh, being addressed. Uh, I have been led to, uh, to believe that uh, the bodies of uh, Altaf and Dr. Uh, Mudassir uh, they are being returned, uh, I believe, sometime tonight. Mm. Uh, but there is also uh, the third uh, victim in this, uh, Amir Magre from uh, Ghul in Jammu. Uh, in, in all this, uh, he seems to have fallen between the cracks and nobody is talking about him. His family also, as his father uh, has pointed out in the, in, uh, in the initial part of your program, he's an anti-militancy crusader. Uh, it's it's almost unbelievable hmm. that his son would be a militant here. Uh, so uh, why can't his body uh, be given back to him uh, so that uh, his father uh, can bury Amir as well? So that is one part of it. But the second part of it is then uh, the, chrono the, the actual encounter itself. Uh, the fact that there have been uh, multiple versions of events given out by the police. Uh, but what uh, we un what I understand from talking to the families, from talking to other people, is quite simple. Mm. Uh, these people, uh, one was a landlord of that building, one was a tenant of the building, a third person worked uh, for one of the tenants. They were taken into that building uh, more than once. They were used to knock on doors and, uh, in effect, they were used as human shields. And then they, they died uh, in, in that process and uh, they were passed off as militants. And this is not the first time we've seen it, unfortunately. And therefore, uh, if uh, the uh, magistrate is brave enough uh, to establish the truth and come out with the truth, then so be it. But I fear uh, that the current climate in Jammu and Kashmir is such mm. uh, that it will take an extremely brave serving officer uh, to actually uh, stick his neck out or her neck out and come out with the truth. And therefore, uh, as, the, uh, as other political parties today have demanded, including my father and, and others within his uh, political, his, within the People's Alliance for Gupka Declaration, this magisterial inquiry uh, needs to be upgraded to a judicial inquiry, and, and the facts need to be uh, made known to the people. Right. I think that actually was something that's, that's quite disturbing. This idea about taking them door to door, almost using them as a human shield. Uh, you know, and, and it's almost paradoxical. On one hand, you're claiming that they're terror uh, associates or that they're themselves terrorist enablers. And then you're actually taking them door to door. And, and look, at what, look at what you're using as evidence to, to justify your claims. Somebody was running an illegal call center. I mean, please tell me, Vasu, is this the only illegal call center being run? Assuming it was an illegal call center. Hmm. I mean, where, is, where are the grounds for, for making this claim? I mean, unfortunately, we have turned the law of natural justice on its head in Jammu and Kashmir. Normally, you would believe that you are innocent until proven guilty. But over the last few years, we have found that guilt is first, uh, uh, is first claimed and innocence has to be established. And therefore... Uh, as far as the authorities are concerned, they've already established that this was an illegal call center that was being used for anti-national and, and militancy-related activities. Yeah. And now it's for the families of the dead person to prove that that wasn't the case. But that's not the way justice is supposed to work. Innocence is presumed. Guilt has to be established, not the other way around. Sure. And, and you know, even if one can contest uh, the, the claims, the families oftentimes do come out and say, look, you know, these people were innocent and so on. Um, Tell me if this is new, though, where at least in the past there was some space to ventilate, protest, you could come out and grieve. Uh, here, bodies are, are, are buried. Uh, you have little children holding up signs saying, give me my papa's body back. Some families sit on the road. Uh, they're thrown in the back of a truck. 
that look what we've been reduced to this is this is the kashmir of 2021 this is the kashmir where uh, the honorable prime minister famously in his meeting with with some of us earlier in the year hmm. said that he wants to remove the uh, dil se duri or uh, dil ki duri or delhi se duri look look what we have been reduced to we are not protesting for justice right now we are not protesting for an inquiry we are being forced to protest for a body to be returned and for a body that the police itself says was of a person who was killed in crossfire hmm. so it's not as if the families are protesting for the dead body of a militant which is in itself would be justified right in this case the family has been forced and some of us have been forced to 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 join with them so that they get justice and not for anything else but to have their bodies returned right. so that they can be buried uh, with the family present i mean that's what we've been reduced to in the in the kashmir of 2021 but um just last question uh, that what do you think where, i mean where is this coming from because uh, there has been an uptick on violence there have been the targeted killing of of minorities uh, uh, you know security forces could argue that listen uh, we have to get proactive and and we need to sort of you know root out this this new dangerous turn that things have taken uh, is is it is it coming from that space or or you believe that there are too many questions here is this the first government that is dealing with militancy militancy or terror is not the product of the last 3 years hmm. we have been dealing with it since 1988 but the uncontrolled use of force and and the way in which the uh, events are covered up this is unacceptable look we all know we've all been part of part of governments where mistakes have happened there is not a single chief minister who has been in office since 1988 89 who can claim that there were no mistakes made during their government but we at least had the courage to own up and then try and address hmm. here uh, it's as if the uh, the admission of something uh, of a mistake having been made is a cardinal sin and everybody then sort of moves in to to cover up the mistake and one mistake unders unders all the good that you've done in the last few years right you need to carry the people with you if you want to fight the menace of terror you are not going to be able to fight it without the people with you please understand the successes that you had after 1996 the successes yeah. that you had after 2014 yeah. you had those successes because you carried the people with you the fact that you were able to clear sirinagar of militancy when i was chief minister that we were able to demolish more than 40 bunkers in sirinagar it was because we carried the population with us right they were part of our our fight to normalize the situation you can't expect a victory if you are going to alienate the population and i'm sorry right now what we are seeing is an is a concerted effort to alienate the people of jammu and kashmir not to carry the people of jammu and kashmir with them okay all right strong words there omar abdullah thank you so much indeed uh, for joining us